Hi everybody. Um, as uh, as Rob said there, uh, down from Scotland, but we have a Manchester office, so it's not actually that bad. Um, I'm kind of down here on a reasonably regular basis. Uh, the purpose of um, tonight's presentation is really to look at um, what I've termed a methodology for model coordination. It's not the only way of doing it, it's just our way of doing it. It's the way that we operate with at the moment. Um, in six months time it may be slightly different from what we're doing just now, but it should give you a good idea as to kind of either what you're doing just now, how well that works, or it might give you a few ideas as to an alternative way of doing it. If you're not doing any kind of model coordination or you just totally struggle with it, hopefully it will give you a good grounding um, as, to, uh, as to how to start. So my name is Keith Wilkinson. I'm the uh, BIM manager for JM Architects, uh, four offices across the UK, uh, mainly based in Edinburgh, but as I say, we have a, a reasonably large office here in Manchester. So agenda for tonight, uh, just very quickly, a very brief introduction, um, then we're going to look at uh, Revit coordinate systems, um, look at linking models using origin to origin, then we're going to look at setting up a project site and how we do that with uh, survey data, then using that site to publish shared coordinates back to our uh, individual uh, model files. Um, and then we'll just look very briefly um, at how we change the, the building location. So if your building needs to move on the site, um, we'll look at that as well. And then a very brief summary at the end. Um, I'm going to try and keep this kind of fairly concise. As we go through each section, um, we've got a couple of slides that sort of explains the concept. And then we'll just do a very brief, um, well hopefully a very brief, he said, fingers crossed, uh, demonstration in Revit live, um, which always makes me nervous. but. Hopefully, hopefully it'll go okay. It was fine in the train on the way down. Let's put it that way. Okay, so what this is about, provide a simple, robust methodology for setting up and maintaining coordination between Revit project files. So this is between your, your project team and to make sure that all your models are working together in the same way, in the same location. Okay, so within Revit, we have a number of different, uh, if you like, coordinate systems and different points that people will talk about. So the first one we've got is our Revit survey point. Um, and what the survey point essentially does is it will define where your project sits in a global environment. So it will basically define where your site um, within, if you're working in the UK, within the UK or, or further afield. Okay, pretty important. Second one is a project base point. Um, that can be moved kind of where you need to and all it really does is set up a local coordinate system for your project. I'll be honest, we don't use it very much, but it is there as a, as a tool. Most of the stuff we do is done to global coordinates, okay? But it is there as an option um, to be able to move around. Both the survey point and the project base point, base point can be moved as required, okay? We next have an origin point. So within Revit, we have, and it used to be a very mysterious thing, but we have an origin point that Revit uses to record all its geometry. So it's essentially like in AutoCAD, it's your zero, zero point, okay? We can locate that using the uh, project base point, okay? But otherwise, the Revit origin is not visible, okay? There's then an option for a center point. Again, this would be used if you're linking files together. And the center point is supposed to be, essentially, if you drew a bounding box around your entire model, it's supposed to be the geometric center of that bounding box. It's a very vague point, okay? But it is, in some instances, quite useful. And then finally, at the bottom there, we've got shared coordinates. And all shared coordinates really is, is a transfer of coordinates from one project file to another. Okay, in, in simple terms, that's all it is, okay? So, if we look at our kind of model setup that we work with, is we will have an architectural model, and into that we'll have that linked with the structural model MEP, and conversely, we'll have the structural model uh, with architecture and so on. So everybody's got everybody else's models linked in. And we also have the site model um, that we use as an external file to coordinate all of that. Um, and again, everybody would have their models linked into that, that file, okay? And all those models would be shared via our CDE and everybody would have access to those. Okay, so looking first at linking origin to origin. As I say, we have 
Um, these three points, we've got our project base point, survey point, and Revit origin. And we can move, or sorry, we can, we can put our building on that site. So if you imagine you open up your Revit template file and you start building your, uh, building your model, what you want to do is have your, your model centered or roughly centered round about your, uh, your Revit origin. Um, that is really the key thing. The, the Revit origin, as I said earlier, cannot be moved. It's, it's a fixed point unlike um, your project base point, your survey point. Okay, so once you start modeling, the only way you can change the relationship between your Revit origin and your building is to physically move the entire model, which is a very difficult, if you've ever tried to do it, is a very difficult thing to do. Okay, so what you want to do is start building your model with that Revit origin, I would argue, somewhere within the building footprint. Okay, project base point. We can move that wherever we want. Doesn't really, at this point in time, at the initial start, doesn't really matter too much. Um, you, as I say, you can move it to a, a known grid location, for example, if that works for you. Um, survey point as well, that can be moved as well, with no impact in terms of how your model relates to that origin point. As I say, you move those two points, your origin point will still stay fixed. Okay? So if you take one thing away from tonight, it's understanding that that origin point cannot be moved and it's, it's a fixed entity, okay? So we've got here um, the ideal model setup between our, our sorry, kind of three primary disciplines where we have our project base point in the same place, we've got our um, survey point in the same place and all three models are orientated around our Revit origin in exactly the same place. So that's our ideal scenario. An acceptable scenario would also be to have the survey points and the project base points in different places, so long as that origin point is identical on each model. Okay? What's not acceptable is to have your origin point in different places. Okay? That makes life very difficult later on. As I say, if you start this right, life's easy. If you don't, it becomes much more complicated. What we can then do is we can take those three files and using linking origin to origin, those three files will drop in in exactly the same place within each of the Revit files. Okay? So, if we quickly do a demo of this, he said, and this is where we need to keep our fingers crossed. So, Okay, so this is a, a very simple model that we set up, uh, a couple of grid lines, a few walls in, um, and in the middle here you can see we've got our project base point and we also have our survey point underneath that, let me just hide that out of the way, so we've got our survey point, everything is sitting saying it's at zero, 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 uh, which is ideal, okay. I said earlier that we can use the project base point to find where the Revit origin is, okay, as I say the Revit origin otherwise isn't really visible to you. Okay, if I take that project base point and move it over here, if I unclip that and right click on it, I have an option here in my context menu that says move to startup location. Okay, the startup location is your Revit origin. Okay, so on any project file, if you want to find out where the origin is, simply turn on your project base point, unclip it, <coughs> move to startup location, and it will drop back to its original, original starting point. Okay. So let's say what we've got here, some simple walls just centered about that, um, that project base point. Be careful, don't just assume that because the coordinate sets at 0, 0, 0, that it's at the Revit origin. I think I've just killed Revit. Hang on. <coughs> See, never work with live software, children are animals, that's the three things. I'm going to blame Rob for this, by the way. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's his computer. So. <laughs> okay, so, as I say, don't assume that just because the coordinates say 0, 0, uh, so we have a file here, 
that's been set up to all intents and purposes looks exactly the same as the one that we had earlier but if I go to my origin point it says everything's at zero it'll be the same for um, my uh, my model or sorry my survey point but if I right click on that oh sorry come on move to startup location my origin's actually down here okay so as I say don't just assume that whenever you open up and I've made this mistake myself I've set up a template file that I, I built from a, a previous project and for one reason or another the um, the origin point the project base point and the survey point were not at the origin um, which was a bit of a, a faux pas on my part but as I say do not assume at any point that that's in the right place before you start your model check it and make sure it's where it should be okay so we created our architect creates their their file initially it's a usual kind of flow for things um, is this going to close down again no it's not okay they issue that to the rest of the team and we're now going to put on our structural hat so they open up, they've got their template file here. Again, we select our project base point, unclip that, just check its location, move the startup location, all good. Okay, then what we want to do is link in the architectural file. Okay, so we go to 101, and we're linking here, positioning origin to origin. Okay, so we want Revit to take those origin points and put one directly on top of the other. Okay, so that drops in here. And then as structure engineers, what we'll do is we'll go along and we'll put our grids in, we'll put our columns in and everything else, and then we'll issue our, our model. And what we end up with, just to save time, in good Blue Peter style, I've got one I prepared earlier. Let me open that. So our first... So we have there our structural file, and as I say, we've got our, our architectural model linked in. So these are now both linked um, origin to origin. Um, and that, that is, in essence, the, the start of our coordination process. Okay, So at any point in time, if we unload one of these, so if we insert manage links, if I remove that, okay, at any point in time, if I want to bring that back in, I go to add, pick my architectural model, origin to origin, okay, and that drops in in exactly the right place, okay, and as I said earlier, it's very difficult to move a model from the origin point, it will grow and it will shrink in different directions as the design develops, but fundamentally that point will stay in exactly the same place. Okay, so that is linking origin to origin, close that down. If we go back, uh, any questions on that? We'll just do a few, if anyone has any quick questions as we go along. If not, we'll just... Is, is the reason what? using the origin point because it can't be moved rather than using the project base point? Yes. So someone could mess up? It? Yes, it's exactly that. What, what, what we want is, is a fixed point that is difficult for people to screw up. Yeah. Because <laughs> invariably, if people can screw it up, they will screw it up but it's very difficult. If you have your models coordinated at day one, and what we do now is we actually send out um, to all our consultants that we work with, we send out a cheat sheet to them and basically say, follow these instructions. And it's, it's only half a page. And it's like, follow these instructions whenever you're setting up your model so that we know whenever it comes in. And I've got to be honest, I mean, the, the, if you like, the better practices are those that have been in the, the BIM sphere for longer tend to do this anyway. But what we find is there's a lot of other consultants out there who are just starting on the journey and don't necessarily understand the importance of it. So as I say, it's a very short cheat sheet, but um, very important in terms of um, getting things right. Because you want it right at day one. If you don't get it right at day one, very hard to fix it later on. Um, well, no, we, we would. All I'm trying to demonstrate... Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, so the question is... Sorry, give me a, just... Um, so is there a reason in your demo you showed moving the base point from the origin to the core of the building rather than just... Keeping it in the same place. place? 
Okay, so so just for the for the the tape, um, that's, is there a reason why I've moved the project base point? All I'm trying to highlight there is the fact that the project base point can be moved, and in moving that, it has no effect on linking origin to origin. Okay, if if your if your models don't link origin to origin, there's no way to fix that other than physically moving the geometry. You can move your project base points and your survey points as much as you want, but it will not affect that origin to origin linking. So all I'm trying to demonstrate there is that the two are essentially independent of each other. So I've got this wee kind of floaty thing for the recording stuff here. Right, so if we go back. Okay, so uh, project site setup. Um, a couple of, there's a lot of things you could check in a survey file before you start, but just very basically things that you want to check. Um, survey data in from your survey company. First thing you want to do, check the suitable format that you can actually bring into, uh, into Revit. To check the coordinate system that's been used for your survey file, um, what we find is if you don't specify to your survey company that you want it to global coordinates, they do it to a local grid. And a local grid, quite honestly, is about as much use as a chocolate teapot. Okay, they then charge it extra to go back out to site again and transpose it to a global grid. So if you're ever commissioning a survey, make sure you ask for it to be to global coordinates. Check that the location is correct. So while you've got your survey in and it looks like it's global coordinates, stick them into a website like GridFinder, Eastings and Northings, and that will show you on the map exactly where it is. So if you're supposed to be doing a project in Manchester and it actually shows up in London, you know there's something not quite right there. And finally, and quite importantly, check the units of the file, okay? Typically, a survey file coming in from a survey company will be in meters and not millimeters. As architects, we tend to work in millimeters, so you just need to be aware of what units are being used within that survey file. Okay, so I've kind of stolen this from uh, a BS 1192 because it's everybody's favorite standard, okay? So just to give you a little bit of familiarity there. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to link in the survey file, and in this case, we're just going to use center to center, okay? Because we don't actually mind at this point, so long as we see it in the middle of our screen, that's all I'm after just now. Once we've linked that in, what we're going to do is we're going to use the tool which is called Specify Coordinates at Point. Now, Revit has lots of options for um, rotating project north relative to true north and lots of other things. You generally don't need any of them. Okay, by using this system, you can do it all essentially through the site file and using specify coordinates at point. Okay, specifying coordinates at point, you can do your eastings, northings, and you can also do elevation. Okay, with the elevation, if you're using, um, for example, I tend to use a reference plane to mark the point that I'm going to click on. Okay, if you do that you want to watch where your cut plane is for that view, okay? If your cut plane is at 100 meters and you click on the end of that reference plane, your automatic elevation will be at 100 meters, okay? So the sensible thing to do is before you do this is set your cut plane to be at zero and that means it will be on the level of the plan that you're in and I'll, I'll demonstrate that whenever we, we see it in Revit, okay? Once you specify coordinates at point, what you will find is that your, um, your survey point will disappear from the middle of your file and it will disappear off somewhere probably down the bottom left hand corner if you're doing a job in the UK. Okay, That's fine. It stays at zero, 00 and what it is essentially doing is moving your entire site from zero, 00 up to where your global coordinates are. Once you've done that, to make sure you're right, what you want to do is check at least two other coordinates within your survey file. Okay. Now, if it has a grid on it, life's great because grids have nice round numbers on them and they're very easy to check. Okay. If it doesn't have a grid on it and you're using station points, just be careful that the numbers are exactly as they're supposed to be. Okay. Finally, what we do is we go and find our survey point, which is at zero, zero. We unclip that, and that's quite important, because if we don't unclip it and we move the survey point, what's going to happen is we're actually moving the building away from the site again, okay? So you want to unclip that survey point and then move it up to somewhere 
you know, on your on your screen there. And again, that's just to keep everything kind of nice and tidy if you do a zoom extent so that you don't end up with just seeing two, two points and no graphics. Okay, so let's see if we can quickly demo that. That's shut down again. Why does it keep doing that? I think it hates me. No, no, it's it's missing from the uh, taskbar. So no, Camtasia is kind of floating about in the middle of the screen somewhere at the moment. <laughs> okay, so Okay, so we have our site file template set up here. What we're going to do is go to insert, manage links. And again, we're not inserting anything. We're always linking the files in so that we can deal with any updates. Generally avoid uh, linking or inserting any CAD into a, a Revit file at any point in time. Um, and this is our, our survey file. Now, I said to you earlier that it's important to check what your units are. Okay, what I find is that if you leave import units to auto detect, generally if it's in millimeters it's fine if it's in anything else it generally tends to get it wrong and um, so I would always change this to be the units that have been used within the the survey file okay I'm gonna change that just to black and white um, and then I'm changing this to center to center and that's just to make sure if I did origin to origin it would still bring it in but because the origin's so far away it'll give me an error or give me a warning and say that it's going to use um, center to center anyway so as I say because we're using specify coordinates a point it doesn't really matter okay so we bring that in and that pops in there okay so that's our, that's our survey file in, and you can see we have a nicely defined grid here um, with our eastings and northings on it. Okay, now again, to save a little bit of time, I've got, please don't shut down. So we go to site two. All I've done here is put in a few reference planes um, and a few uh, spot coordinates. So the ones in the, the top left are showing the, uh, the project base point coordinates um, and the ones in the bottom right are showing the survey coordinates. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to manage, wherever that's gone, manage. Specify coordinates at point. And I click on a point here. Now, I said earlier there, if we uh, look at the view range. So in this case here, I've got the view range set to zero. Okay. So if I click on, oh, sorry. Specify coordinates of point, click on there. You'll see my elevation is zero. If my cut plane was at, as I say, 100 meters, then that value would start reading at 100 meters. Okay, because that's the point that I'm clicking at. What I want is I want my, my level zero in here and my site level to be at a known datum. Okay, so I'm basically saying in this case it's at 18 meters. So in there I'm going to put 18. My site file here um, in terms of my project file is in millimeters. Okay, so although I've imported in meters, my, my units are in millimeters. And then all I need to do is put in my eastings and northings. So 2190. And again, because I'm in millimetres, I need another three zeros on the end. So nine digits if it's millimetres, six digits if it's in metres. Okay. Five, nine, seven, four, zero, zero, one, two, three. Okay. Click OK. So what we see is that all changes now. So I've got my three points. I can check those off against my eastings and northings here. Um, and you'll see that my, my project base point hasn't moved, so it's still exactly as it was, and those digits or are, are coordinates are still exactly as they were. But my site is now located where I need it to be. If I do my zoom extents, you'll see I've got my, 
survey point down here, my project base point and all my graphics up here. So I'm just going to unclip that. I'm going to drag that up. Zoom extents again. And then I could leave it, I could leave it there or what can actually be quite handy is stick it on one of your known points. And then again you can use that as a as a check. So I can put that back in. And if if I want to be particularly careful, then I can pin that in place as well. Okay. So that's it, that's my site file set up now. Um, and that's that's all good to go. I can now start looking at linking in my uh, my project files. So very quickly, any questions on that stage? Do you suppress the trailing zeros in in the northings and eastings? Yeah. Well, because I'm using a grid, that's where the advantage of having a, a grid point is, because they will be the round figures typically. So if you're using a station point, then where it is to where you've got points on the end. Again, typically it'll be in meters, so you would have effectively nine digits. So you'd have six before the decimal point and three after. So you'd effectively be giving it to, that's going to millimeter accuracy. Okay, so there isn't any need, I would say, to put anything beyond the nine digits. Um, if you're working in meters, then six digits plus potentially three decimals. Um, but it just depends what's in your survey file. If you can work to the grid, it's much, much easier because, as I say, you get nice round numbers. It's really easy to check, really easy to see whether it's right or wrong. Okay. If you if you put that in in meters, you would see straight away that your grid, you know, as soon as you look at the next grid line along, you'll see that your numbers don't tally up. Um, and it's caught me out in the past where you're kind of going, why isn't that right? And it's just simply because you've imported it the wrong units or it's converted it to the wrong units. Okay. Any other questions on that? Are we good to crack on. Uh, okay, so let me go back to here. Okay, so publishing shared coordinates. So we got our site file all set up and um, done to uh, um, global coordinates now. What we want to do is we want to link in our architectural file and we can do that at this point in time. We can do it origin to origin or center to center. It doesn't matter because we're going to move it once it's imported anyway. Okay, so we have our linked file here. And all we're going to do is we're going to position that on the site where it needs to be. Okay, so literally all we're going to do, we're going to drag it into position, we're going to rotate it around or align it or whatever we've got to actually locate that building correctly on the site. Okay. Once we've done that, what we're then going to do is we're then going to publish those shared coordinates back to our model file. So we have a link in here, we have our model file um, sitting on the server. Um, our, our coordinates initially are going to be to our local grid, so minus 10,000 by 5,000. Whenever we publish those coordinates, those points should then change to match what we have in our site file. Okay? It's gone again. No, I wouldn't do that. There we go. Right. Okay, so. If we open, I've got to remember. Uh, da, 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 da. I think it's that one. Okay, so if we insert again, linking rather than inserting, um, this time Revit format, and we pick our architectural model. <coughs> go with that one. Just let it go to origin to origin. Okay, now obviously I had my uh, my cut plane set to zero, so I don't actually see, I see my grid okay, but I don't see any of my walls, so I need to remember to put my view range there back, because it's my site plan, I'm just gonna put that back to 10,000. Okay, so I see my walls, and all I need to do now, quite simply, is select that, he said. I think I have broken your... Oh, so I do. Uh, where is it? Which one? That one. That one. There we go. Thanks for that. See, I would say that was a test, but <laughs> okay. So I'll rotate that thirty degrees. Okay. So as I say, what we can do now is, if we come in here, we can actually just put a reference plane in this corner of the grid. 
stick a spot coordinate on that. I haven't saved that, sorry. Let me just, uh, I knew this would go wrong. So manage links. Uh, okay, so we position that in the site and then back to manage coordinates, publish coordinates, click on our link. If you're doing multiple sites, you can change the name of this. If it's just a single site, single building location, you don't need to worry too much about that. You can just go with the, uh, the default there. Okay, and after you've done that, go back to insert, manage links, click on your link, and click on save positions. Okay, and that's the point that actually pushes those coordinates back out to your to your model okay it will prompt you whenever you close the file the site file down it will prompt you to do that but I prefer to do it file by file to make sure I have any files that I've got in there that I have actually saved the coordinates back to those <coughs> okay so if we open up Having said, I moved my, my uh, survey point, I've not done that. However, we come in here and look here now, we've got, so we've got those coordinates there, and what we'll do, um, if I go back here, Just to, to prove to you that these are actually the same. Let's pop that on. the coordinates from our site file and the coordinates in our model file are both in exactly the same place okay if we look at the elevation this is where I really have to keep my fingers crossed we look in here our elevation is set to 18 meters okay and that's the same as our site file so we go in there and again we've got 18 meters okay so that is the basis for, as I say, setting up your uh, setting up your shared coordinates within your architectural model. Okay. So, as uh, as good architects, we then issue that site file and instruct or ask our other consultants to do the same process. And this is often the bit that gets forgotten about. Okay. So we have our building linked in there. Okay, 
what we do, we issue that site file and then we ask our, our consultants to basically reload that linked file, okay? And they just reload, use reload from, select their model on their server. And because we are all using the same origin point, Revit uses that point to swap one out for the other, okay? It's not using your project base point or your survey point or anything else, it's using your, your Revit origin. So if those two models are in exactly the same place, you can just do a straight swap one for the other, and they can go through exactly the same process. They'll have their model file with their own local coordinates, publish the coordinates, and those coordinates will then update. Okay, so just very, very quickly on that. Uh, so, okay. uh, so we go back to our site file. Wrong one, isn't it? Wrong one. Sorry. You should ask for a new computer, Rob. So. You get a faster one. Right and some screen cleaner as well. That's the other thing. <laughs> okay, so that's our architectural model. Insert, manage links. Select the architectural one, reload from, select our structural model. Actually, use that one. Doesn't really matter. And that swaps one out directly for the other. And then it's just exactly the same process. Go to manage, publish coordinates, click on the link, and that's you done. Okay, so literally as simple as that. Okay, no having to mess around with moving models or anything else. It's all there, all works. Okay, so just very quickly, the last thing I just wanted to go through was if you need to make a change, um, and this is one of the reasons I really like this setup. Um, we've got, we, we do a lot of schools, um, and invariably they find issues on site. Um, generally before they start building, um, but quite often what happens is the building, the entire school needs to move on the site. Okay, With this setup, that's really easy to do. I can literally go into my site file, I can take my link model, and I can move that to the new site location. Okay, We've had a number of projects as well where the buildings had to be raised up by half a metre. Um, same kind of idea, in one case it was because of flooding, um, and in another case it was because of roads that at the time the survey had been done, the roads hadn't been built. Once all that was done, the entire building had to move. Again, with this setup, it's easy. Just move it on the site. Exactly the same idea. Model file, publish those shared coordinates, um, and you're, you're good to go. So if we look this side just very, very quickly at that. Uh, so if I undo that. Of course, I can't do that. Gives you that big warning that says you can't undo. Okay, so if I want to move the, the level, and I'll just show you that as an example, um, what I can do is I can use my specified coordinates at point again. So if I go down to my base point down here, uh, at the moment that's showing as a zero, okay? If I unclip that, sorry, unpin it, unclip it, and go back to manage, uh, actually as well, let me just check, he said. So again, my view range. So at this point, my view range is set to um, 100 meters or 100,000 millimeters. So I'll just show you the difference that that actually makes. So if I do specify coordinates at point, click on here, you'll see that the actual height that it's given me there is 118,000 um, rather than um, just 18,000. Okay, so it's taking into consideration the fact that our cut plane is quite high. What I'm going to do is just increase that by 500. Okay, so I'm just saying actually my ground floor now is at, is at 18, uh, 1850. Okay. If I click on that, that now reads as 500. That's the change that we've had. So it was at zero before, it's now at 500. 
Um, if I'd unclipped that whenever I originally set my um, specify coordinates to point, that would read 18 and then change to 18,500, okay? It's just if we look at it in elevation. Do you not find it easier to specify coordinates at point in an elevational section? Um, we, we have done it that way as well, but I'm, I'm moving more towards just controlling it all with the same, the same point. Um, it's horses for courses really, it's just whatever way, whatever way you prefer to do it. You, you'll end up with the same result, effectively. Um, by using specify coordinates at point, I don't need to worry about moving my building up. So I could change, for example, I could change my level here and make that 1850 rather than 1800. No, Specify coordinates at point in this elevation. Oh right, sorry. On that line, yeah. You haven't got to worry about the yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, you could do that. So what you're what you're saying is basically, if I turn on my uh, my survey point, so what you're saying is, if I come in here now, because at the moment that is, um, if I run. Sorry, see I'm going off script now. <laughs> so that's at 500. If I change, so that's still on pinned. If I change that to 18.500, that goes up and lines in with my, um, but you're right, you could you could so specify. If you do the, the manage coordinates yep. specify point and just click on that level line. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, is a, that is a good option. Okay, so if we just go back to our plan view again. Um, so as I say, we've moved that up by 500 mil. All we do now is go back to our published coordinates. <coughs> Click on that. Okay. Again, insert, manage links. This bit's important. I tend to forget about it sometimes, but it is really important to save positions. Otherwise, you're going to be going back in and looking at your... Uh, your model and nothing will have changed okay so mental note to spend more time on the train next time. There we are, our 18500. Okay, and then again if you were issuing that out to the other consultants you were given the same kind of information say go back through and publish your coordinates again. Okay, I think that is pretty much us. So just in summary, what we've looked at, principles of linking origin to origin and the importance of that. Um, how to set up a file, a site file, and using global coordinates. How to then use that site file to set up our shared coordinates and how to change the building location on the site. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. If anybody needs to get in touch, you can find me on Twitter, on Studio BIM, um, or you can email me at uh, keith.wilkinson at jmarchitects.net. Any other questions before I...